Hello everybody, my name is Ben. Welcome back to another Woodworking Wisdom. Today we are, we are looking at pyrography, so this is kind of my comfort zone here. Um, we're going to look at some mark making, just some pretty kind of simple decorative stuff. And although I'm doing this on a flat piece of wood, you could do this on, on whatever medium you're working on. Um, you know, you can imagine this on your bowls, on your, um, you know, on sides of cabinets and things like that. Um, so, you know, don't think we're, we're just stuck to a, a plain bit of timber. Um, you can burn on anything that's, um, you know, made of wood. Uh, this works on leathers, on cork. Um, so, you know, we're not just stuck to our, our flat bit of wood here. Um, today, just for, for ease, we're going we're gonna to show you a few techniques and we're going to start to introduce a little bit of colour and a little bit of, um, you know, some, some creams and things like that. So we can explore things like stains, um, but really just kind of decorative stuff to kind of help elevate your workpiece. Um, so let's get straight into it. Um, I've got a piece of tulip here. Um, nothing to... Um, it, it is, it's quite a, a plain piece of timber, and that's kind of what we're going for. Um, we want to add our own design, we want to add our own interest onto this piece of timber. Um, so, straight into it. I'm working on my Antex Firewriter to start with. Okay, um, let's just go on to that overhead camera there, Jason. Um, so today on the cameras we've got Jason, we've got Colwyn asking the questions. Uh, so we've got the guys here. And they're going to look after us. Um, but we have got um, uh, what they call a writing style tip into our pyrography pen. Okay. And that's just a round wire. This is the, uh, the nichrome wire I'm talking about. Um, you usually get a set of these in the box with the, with the fire writer, all sorts of different thicknesses. Okay. Um, so we're going to start off just starting to, to build a bit of texture. Okay. The way I'm going to do that, I'm going to use a method called stippling, and that's really a, a lots of little dots. Okay, so we're going to start off just by pressing lots of little dots next to one another and starting to build a little texture. So we've got our first question coming in already. It's good to see. So, uh, oh, oh, sorry, no, no questions yet. Um, so we're building up a little um, stippling, okay? Um, this is taking the shape of the wire, um, and all I'm doing is lots of dots in a row, okay? This can give you a nice little texture, almost like kind of like snake skin or shark skin type of texture, okay? I'll show you this up close on the cam in a moment, but also say this was on the rim of a bowl or, um, you know, on, on, on any kind of um, object really, when you pick it up, it's got that kind of rough feel to it. It's got that, um, that kind of rough texture. Okay. So it makes it, um, makes it just that little bit, you know, a bit more interesting. And so let's come up onto that, um, that close up cam there and I'll see if I can come even closer. Um, I've not done much yet, but you can start to see that little texture build up. Okay, and if I drag my nail across it, it's kind of um, like a little rough shark skin texture. Okay, so that's stippling. It's really easy. You know, anyone can do this. Um, that's with our, our writing style tip. Um, but there's nothing to say you couldn't go across to your... Um, you know, the solid point type ones. Um, with some of these, you get a little tip. So let's just come overhead, Jason. That's lovely, thank you. So you can get all sorts of tips for these. Um, that's the one I would probably use for the stippling, the little kind of sharp type one. Um, but, you know, you can do, do it with this kind of chisel type. So if I hold that up to our camera here, you can see that kind of um, chisel shape on this one, okay? And when, if you start to do little dots like that, they're gonna start to look like triangles, okay? And that will look quite cool as well. So different shape tips are gonna give you a different mark, 
All right. So that's our kind of what they call a skew type one, like a bit like the skew chisel we find in wood turning. Okay. So what else can we do with our writing style tip? Obviously, it's um, this one kind of burns on the surface. Um, we're not going in too deep with this. Um, so we can stop, drag the tip, and just slow down now and then. And this will give you a nice little texture. And if we alternate that with one next to it and just kind of hit that midpoint, we can really start to build up really easy patterns. Okay. And again, this could go on all sorts of stuff. You know, that looked quite cool on like a little coaster or something like that um, down the edge of a, a little cabinet. Um, but yeah, we're starting to build up a few little textures here. Okay. Same sort of thing with this. We can drop it in. We'll create that burn to begin with. We can bring a little flink, a little tail off. All right. They're almost like kind of upside down drips and things. Okay. So fairly straightforward. Um, you know, you could use the whole of this tip. You can roll it on the edge of the board. You know, there's nothing to say we have to use that just to the tip of this uh, pyrography pen. We use the whole of that wire. And I'm rolling that, okay? And we can, again, imagine that around borders, um, all sorts of stuff. So we're coming away from the kind of illustrative stuff and, and just mark making, all right? Now, what we're doing, we're changing the kind of surface of the timber, all right? So these are actually burnt in. Um, a, a bit later, we can, we can add creams and pastes and things like that. But what we're trying to do really is to kind of disrupt the surface of the timber, um, allowing us to, to put um, different creams. And um, so we're going to use some gilt creams and stuff like that, some of the metallic stuff. Um, and then you'll start to see these things really kind of pop. OK, um, really straightforward. Um, you know, anyone can do this sort of stuff. Um, and then there's also, you know, I say this is a fairly um, plain piece of timber. We have got a few little knots up at this end here. I don't know if we can see that on our um, overhead. We've got a few little knots here. And if we come to this, um, this side camera where we've got our close up, there we go. We can see those knots um, just in the timber there. And I think we're going to do something just to bring those out. OK, so nice and simple again. We're just going to do some kind of leaf shape. So this is a, a mechanical pencil, um, one we turned ourselves. I'm just going to put a few leaf shapes around this, or, or petals, I should say. We've got another one lying in underneath there. So let's do that as well while we're here. And we'll burn these in. And we can look at adding a bit of color. OK. Um, I like these mechanical pencils because um, they got that really thin lead in them, that really thin um, carbon down the middle. Um, that will give you a really nice thin line. Um, and also, if you try to use too much pressure, um, that lead's just going to snap. So you're not scoring the timber. Um, you're not kind of putting a deep line in there. OK. Um, so back to our pyrography pen. Um, and you can see I've just done a few little um, petals there, and I've just centered them around these knots. OK, so we're using the information already there in the timber. So nice and gentle around there. OK, so you can see this is our writing style tip. And actually, I'm not liking the thickness of that line. It looks a bit too chunky. So let's just swap over tips. So turn the fire writer off. I'm just going to blow 
on the end there and make sure that that's nice and cool before we actually um, turn it off. These little screws can be a little bit fiddly sometimes, but we'll just slacken those off. And I'm gonna use the back of the screwdriver just to lift that tip out, okay? I've got my kind of sharp tip, one that we made on a previous video. So if you didn't see that, how these tips are made, go back and check our, um, our other pyrography video uh, that's out. That was the introduction to pyrography. And I am just nipping those up. Just want to make sure that that is in there. Nip those up and then just take it that little bit further. Okay, we're not over tightening these. We don't want to break out the back here. Okay. So with our sharp tip, let's see how this performs. See if we can get that quality of line a little bit better. So I'll just tuck my wire away and then let's bring that burn in there. I'm just going to bring the temperature up. Sometimes when you're swapping between tips, um, you might need to adjust the temperature a little. And there we go. We're getting that nice kind of flowing line. Remember with this tip, we actually have to twist the pen for it to come around the curve. So twist the pen as you go. Nice flowing lines. And again, don't worry if we don't completely pick up on that pencil line, because we can always sand that back. The burn will remain if we were not too heavy with the sanding because this is digging right down into the surface, or below the surface, I should say. Okay. So we've got a couple of little flower heads there, just around our knots. Let's put a little stem just coming down here. And then another one from this, just crossing in behind. And you see how that pen twists to give us our kind of curvy line. Good. Okay, so we got a question. Hi, everybody. Um, this is from Chris Sullivan, so a uh, regular viewer. He says, what type of tip would you use for Ogham, Ogham script on a bowl? So it's like an old Irish, um, very old language. Okay, so oh, kind of like the almost like kind of Celtic writing. Exactly, yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> so if I'm, <clears throat> excuse me, if I'm doing um, any kind of lettering, any kind of, um, so I do a lot of signs, a lot of house signs, um, a bit, garden shed signs and things like that. I tend to go around the outline with, with the, the sharp one, which we were just um, looking at there. Um, so get those outlines in nice and, and um, you know, nice and sharp. And then when we're filling in the color, we can either go to um, like a shading tip. So something similar um, to this. Um, so let's come across onto our, um, our close-up camera there. Um, I don't know if you can really get that on camera. Let's come up a bit closer. So where are we here? So that sharp up on edge, if we look at it on its side, it's, it's got a kind of a flat. And I would either use that as a shader um, to, to fill in um, large areas um, or to um, on the, the solid point type ones. So let's come back overhead. Um, we've got these kind of skew type ones and that what I would drag on its side. Um, and if you look at the profile of that, it's almost the same as a kind of a calligraphy type pen, okay? So if you're bringing this tip down this way, 
you'll get a fine line. And if we take it that away, we're going to get that thick line. Okay, that can really work well with the script of this kind of um, calligraphy style of writing. Okay, um, so yeah, you can you can use a tip like that, um, or, or you can fashion your own tip. Okay, um, perhaps we'll have a look at that if we've got time at the end um, to make a tip like this. But what I would do is just using a bit of abrasive and put a flat. You see that's got a curve on it. I would put a flat on that. So again, we've got that same thing. We can use the thin and we can use the thick. Okay, but using the same tip. But lovely, thanks Chris, good question. Um, so where are we at with our little flowers? So I wanted to show you a little bit of color. We have got some, some spirit stains. Um, the, the chestnut spirit stains I use a lot in pyrography. Um, like I said on a previous video, I try not to use too much color because it can really kind of steal the show, all right? And actually, when we're working with materials like wood, um, they've got their own kind of uh, beauty. Um, and it's interesting finding that when you pick it up and you look around the object, um, you, you'll find little knots and little... Um, you know, swirly bits of grain and things like that. Um, and quite often, if you put a color or something like that on, your eyes just drawn straight to the color. Um, spirit stains are really nice because they um, they have a kind of muted uh, quality to them. Um, they're not too, um, you know, in your face like, a, like an acrylic paint would be. And you can also see what's going on underneath. You can still see the timber. It's almost... Um, transparent if you like but it still has that same kind of vibrant color so spirit stains i keep these little um sample packs really um because that, that you get a lot of use out of each of these bottles um and then the ones that i use the most so usually white and yellow for me because i do lots of birds um you know if i run out of that i'd buy a big bottle of that one and then carry on with my um, with these little ones. So these are really good. This is the rainbow pack. It's down in the links. Um, what am I looking for? Yellow. It's right at the back. That was really thought. Let's just grab that one out. We've got a yellow. I'm going to use a bit of white and perhaps a little bit of green on the stalk. These I'm going to put to one side. Just bear with me a moment. Try and keep this surface nice and tidy. So, what have we got here? Um, I'm gonna, just going to add some colour to this. Um, a little brush, a little artist brush. And I think we're going to go... Let's go yellow for the centre. We'll do some white leaves. So it's almost kind of like a daisy style um, type thing. Wrong shaped leaf, but hey-ho. Um, so, this yellow, I'm just going to use in the very center, so it's almost like the, the little bud in the middle there. Okay. And like I say, it's very subtle. It's not too kind of, um, you know, it's, it, it's not sitting on top like an acrylic paint of wood. Okay, you can still see that knot. You can still see all the information in that knot. All right, so we're, we're coloring the wood. We're not putting color on top of the wood. Okay. So that's a bit of the yellow. Um, we're going to go white for the petals. I'm going to give that a little shake. Now this white one, um, I, I shook that. It has got a little pigment at the bottom, okay? Um, so it's got a little bit of pigment in it. Um, we're just going to get some of that uh, material. And I'm scooping this from the top of the bottle. You see there's a little bit of residue up in the top here. That's where you're going to get your kind of vibrant color from. Just going to wet the brush and then see if we can pick up some of this, this white. 
And you can build this up in layers. And actually, the pyrography is helping to retain that color. Okay. So it's not bleeding. I've, I've not loaded the brush too much, um, but we are just building up a little bit of white on each of these petals. And like I say, a few visits at this will really give you that nice um, vibrancy. And you can layer it up. So say you had a a whiter bit it's down the center of these, you can come back and just put a little brush stroke back in on the center and just bring that, um, that detail out. So, so obviously this is a liquid and the timber is um, very porous. And what can happen is that um, this will bleed across the surface, just like it would with like a, a watercolor. Um, you know, you've got to imagine this as a, a piece of paper or a piece of card. It's got very similar properties. Um, and, and these colors can bleed, okay? If you put too much on, um, if you're, um, you know, really loading your brush, um, just be aware that these, these colors can breathe, bleed, sorry. Um, the pyrography will keep it in check to a certain extent, but if you're really putting a lot on, um, expect a little bit of bleeding here and there. So, a little bit of green. Um, quite a fine little stem, these. So, I'm just going to pop the tip in, in there. You can see the brush is just taking that colour on. Okay, and that was just a tip, and it kind of drinks it in. So we've got our loaded brush. That's going to be plenty for what we want to do on these little lines. So I've put the lid back on. Um, spirit stains, um, you know, the, the clue is in the name. They, they do stain things really uh, well. So I've always got my little mat down um, to stop anything, um, any potential spillages. But just be careful as you go with these because... Um, you know, they, they would be quite difficult to to remove afterwards. A bit of white spirit or something like that will, um, will lift it. Okay, so we've got our little flowers. Um, just a tiny bit of color. Um, and let's bring that up in uh, nice and close to that, um, that side camera there. Okay, um, you can see the color has been kept in check by the pyrography. A bit of a freehand, um, you know, flower there. Take your time with these. Um, use that nice thin tip to give you that good quality of line like that. Okay, and you can kind of see the difference between the writing tip and the sharp tip. Okay, so a little bit on spirit stains. Um, use them in quite a lot of projects. Um, if I just want to show you um, something else we've, we've used spirit stains on, these can be brushed on or they can be um, uh, used in an airbrush. Um, we really like them in the airbrushes because um, they're, they're so low maintenance. If you stick with, the, um, you know, with those colors, um, you, know, you, can, you can leave them in there for quite a long time being spirit based, um, they don't tend to clog up as much. They're, they're very nice and thin. And um, so they're great for use in, in airbrush. So I just want to show you um, a little project I'm working on at the moment. Obviously not to everyone's taste, um, but used a bit of color in this. Um, and you can see where the pyrography has kept it from bleeding, okay? Uh, it's just kept it in that section that we wanted it in. Um, now, with this one, I don't know if you're getting that on camera. Um, we've got it on the um, a still of this as well. Um, but just check out how the difference is between the 
um, the spirit stain, because that's a black spirit stain behind there. And this has been scorched with a, with a blowtorch. Okay, that gives us that kind of burnished, reflective quality. Okay, a bit of a dark subject matter, um, but <laughs> I guess not to everyone's taste. But you can see that kind of flash on this lace wood. It's really picking up. And we've got a still of that one. If we can go on to the still there, you can just see that subtle change between the, um, the what is armor on, on this, uh, this night and um, the, the spirit stain we're seeing in the background, okay? So we're getting two, although they're not actually textures, it really does look like a texture on the armor, okay? Good stuff. So we've got a question here. Yeah, hi, um, this is from David, uh, David Martin, Ben. Um, I, oh, can hi, I can see that the pyro stops the stain bleeding. Is there a technique I can use to stop bleeding in surfaces um, on carving, or should I just use acrylic paints instead? Um, for stains on carving, so there's all sorts of masking and things you can do. Um, so there's, uh, you know, you can use a masking tape that's going to stop it bleeding across the surface. I would recommend not loading your brush as much. So not putting as much uh, material on the brush, or paint, stain, whatever it is, and almost kind of uh, using like a dry brush technique and then just layering that up. A little bit more time consumed, but you don't get that bleed. Um, and there's also, there's lots of different masking techniques. Some people use waxes and things like that, and then, um, and then lift them back off af afterwards. Um, so there's lots of masking techniques. Um, but my recommendation would be to, um, to just wipe the brush as you go. So say we're, um, we've got our bottle of stain here, I would take some stain onto the brush and then I would just get rid of the excess on the side of the bowl. Okay, so you know, you'll see a little drip come down and then your brush isn't loaded as much and it will be a lot, um, a lot more controllable, a little bit more time consuming, um, but um, the, the finish, the end result is going to be closer to what you're looking for, what you're, you know, what you're trying to get out of it. All right, thanks. So brush is going back in there. I tend to keep a brush for one color, okay? So we, my green, that is forever going to be green now. Instead of getting the white spirits out and washing them up and using that um, extra, um, you know, uh, white spirit, oh, that's going to be my green brush forevermore, okay? So another question. A couple of questions, Ben. Um, oh, so uh, Chris, again, he's asking if you did the – if you did something like the flower on a garden sign, how would, you, would an exterior varnish affect it? Um, again, these spirit stains are really good. Um, what I would be, um, so if you were to do that on an outdoor sign, obviously you want to make it weatherproof with, um, with your varnish. So that's going gonna, gonna to sit on the surface. Varnish has, um, depending on which way you go, you can get water-based or, um, you know, the, the kind of uh, oil-based type ones. Um, I think the, the oil-based ones might interfere with it slightly, uh, might sort of pick it up a little. Um, but my recommendation would be if you're varnishing something, um, with a varnish, you don't want to overwork it anyway because you'll start to get um, brush strokes and stuff in it. Um, but just apply it and just leave it. Just let it do its thing. Let, let that drying time happen. Don't allow it to pull too much. So if you've got lots of, um, if you're going deep with this burning, um, don't allow that varnish to kind of pull in the, um, in your pyrography or, or, or whatever it is kind of texture you've got. Um, don't allow it to pull. Um, and perhaps just get a little bit of rag and just pop off the excess. Um, you should see the surface kind of settle back down, um, but don't be brushing it back and forth because that can really lift the pigment. Um, and I would go water-based if you're going on top of um, something that's got a lot of stain on. Okay, so another question. Yeah, another one, this one's from Martin. Um, Hi, Ben, what's the best way to transfer a design or lettering onto the timber, please? Great, yep, so um, loads of different techniques you can use for that. Um, I use uh, a carbon paper or, or graphite paper, okay? Um, carbon paper is readily available. Um, you can get it in, you know, lots of, you can get it in WH Smith's. 
or uh, you know online um so it's kind of office supplies type places uh, will will sell carbon paper um the one i use at home if i'm doing something really special um i use the uh, the graphite paper which is about 10 times the price of uh, carbon paper um and it doesn't give quite the same kind of darkness on the um on the timber so it's not quite as clear as the carbon paper but you um you come away from that kind of wax that holds the um the carbon onto the onto the piece of paper when you're transferring that on um, especially if there's something with lots of detail in it it will leave loads of wax on the surface and um uh, when you're when you're burning that it can leave them uh, you know a bit of mess on the on the tip of the um the pyrography pen um so you'll be constantly cleaning and um and also because it, it, it's wax it can sometimes melt and and just kind of blush into the the uh, the porous wood so if i'm doing something really special um i'll use the um the graphite paper um day-to-day -day stuff is is carbon paper all right it's a lot cheaper as well good stuff oh so you got the questions coming in one yeah, more, good stuff one more yeah um what type of brush do you recommend anything in particular for is that a lead on from the uh, varnish from what you're doing oh there. sorry yeah. yeah so this is um these are the artist brushes again they come in a, a selection of different sizes again if you're getting really down into the detail of things these brushes can be really fine okay so really nice kind of tapered um, end to the brush um, I use these things loads and I got packs and packs of them at home all different colors now um, but yeah um, really really useful they you know they come in the ranges um, in the pack between the kind of bigger ones and the, and the little ones I think they've got the millimeters marked on them somewhere um, but yeah really useful things if we're talking about brushes for varnishes and things like that um, I'd go for the wide kind of um, lacquer brushes they get, get a really good finish off of that. Oh, sorry. Yep. Okay, back in business. Good stuff. Okay, so um, we've looked a little bit at um, uh, mark making. We've done a little bit of stippling, um, just playing around with patterns and things, really. Um, I think we could go into um, looking at some, some different tips. Okay, so now I'm coming away from my um, my fire writer here, and we are going to look at the the solid point one. This is a, the StarTex. Okay, um, and we're going to do some nice heavy texturing now. Okay, so we've got another question here. Sorry, just before no, we move move on, um, this is about the carbon paper. What's the best method of removing the lines after you've done your burning? So. What I tend to do, my kind of method of work would be um, mark it up. Um, so you've got your um, your template. So I, I usually print out a piece of paper um, with whatever you know, whatever it is. If I'm copying, um, I don't know, like a bird from a bird book, photocopy that. Using that photocopy, that gets stuck down to the timber. Your carbon paper goes in underneath, and you just draw around your outline. I then use my um, my sharp tip to to cut that line in, and um, and then once that line's cut in, because it sits below the surface, um, you can then sand that back. Okay, on on a flat thing, you can sand it back. You can sand it on the lathe if you're if you're um, you know working on a bowl or, or something similar. Um, but using this sharp tip. Um, you, it cuts down below the surface, so you're, you're cutting through your uh, carbon lines, um, you're burning the wood, and then I sand that back, okay? Um, and then you're just left with the burn. Um, again, the the kind of waxy carbon paper, sometimes if you're using a, um, a, a sander uh, that hasn't got the extraction, Sometimes that can pick up the carbon paper and just sort of go back into the grain. Um, so you just keep going until you've got rid of that, um, and then your burn should be left. And then you'll have that nice crisp outline as well. 
sometimes when we're burning, um, you'll get a little kind of flare across the surface. Um, and that sanding will, will tidy that up as well. So I reckon put your, um, your um, design onto the wood using your uh, carbon paper, burn in the outline, and then sand back. You've still got all your information on there, um, and then start adding detail. So if you're doing shading, um, if you're then putting like textures and things on, um, you do that after the sanding stage, all right? And that gives you really neat work as well. That's a, that was a kind of revelation to me when I um, first got into this, is that um, you know your, your template, burn it in, sand it back. And, and the, the um, you know, how tidy you can get with things um, can work really well. And you don't always have to do um, like a really deep burn, a really dark burn. I just want to show you something actually, while we've got this on the go, we've got our spirit stains working for us. Let's just show you something else. Um, I'm dropping the temperature right down on the, um, on the pyrography pen now. And actually, I think I'm going to swap back to my writing style tip. So losing this um, the sharp tip and just find my writing tip here. Where did I put that? I would always recommend having like a little bowl as well somewhere close so you can chuck these tips in and they're easy to find afterwards. Okay, so I'm just giving that a little wiggle, make sure it's nicely held. Um, <clears throat> I've dropped the temperature down to five on the on the unit here, um, and I'm going to see what sort of what sort of line that makes, um, or if it even burns at all. Quite a thick wire on these. I like a thick wire; um, it gives it a bit more strength. Okay, so that's not actually burning anything. We are just putting the most gentle burn on. And this looks weird to, um, but I'll, I'll get to the point in a moment. Um, so I'm just doing some kind of wiggly lines. And what that's done is it's kind of burnished the surface. Okay. Um, and it will stop the um, spirit stain from going in too far there. We've kind of closed the pores, if you like. So let's pop a spirit stain across that. And you can see the way, well, it's not really working on camera here. What I have got though is a still. If we can go to the still of um, the bird, Jason. So um, is it number two with the, with the scales? Oh, sorry, it's a fish. Sorry, it's a it's a fish, not a bird. Um, so we're looking at some scales. Um, okay. So on this picture, you can see um, you can see the darker burn at the beginning, but that fades off into nothing. All right. Um, so we, we've we've changed the texture of the timber um, by compressing the fibers and sealing that kind of porous thing. And then once the oil went on there, um, it given us a really nice um, kind of the way the light hits it. It almost has highlights on the edges of these things. Then they're not actually deep burns or dark burns. But what it has done is changed the way the light reflects off it. Okay. Um, so, you know, another thing uh, with texturing, and that's really putting across that point of you don't have to really make a dark burn um, to change the way something looks and the way the kind of the, the way the light's bouncing off it. All right. It didn't really work very well on, on, um, on our little example here, but you so see it quite well on the, um, on the picture there. Okay. So we're going to have a go at a little coaster and we're going to go crazy with some creams and um, coloring and all sorts of stuff we're going to throw at this one. All right. Um, something a little bit more um, fun. 
really nice and easy. This is a cool one to do with like the kids and stuff. Kids love burning things. Um, if, if I <laughs> anything about that, um, you know, my two love it at home. Um, you know, it is fun. As soon as they start seeing smoke and things are hot, um, you know, they get right on board with it. Um, a really nice, quick and easy thing as well. This is just a, a piece of um, a piece of chestnut. Um, not the best for pyrography, if I'm honest. I certainly wouldn't be um, drawing pictures on this um, because it has that really open grain structure. Let's come up to our, um, our close-up camera here. So this way, you can see this open grain structure, okay? And it has that kind of raspy feel to it. And I can feel the grain in that. All right, so not really um, suitable for our kind of illustrative stuff because what's going to happen is when we come across this open grain, our pen's going to dip right in there and give us like a little blob. Um, but for what we're doing now, for the kind of heavy texturing style stuff, this is perfect. And this is going to be a little coaster. Okay, we can put our mugs and, and um, things on that. So I turned this on a minute ago. Um, these do take a long time to heat up. Um, you know, give it a few minutes. I've been kind of chatting and, and trying to buy myself a bit of time. Um, but let's give it a little test. I'm going right up on this corner here. He's not quite ready yet. All right, so we'll give it a, another couple of minutes just to really bring that, that temperature up. Um, what we're going to do with this one is we're going to do like a repeating pattern. Um, so we're going to almost branding, all right? Um, these tips you can get in all sorts of uh, different shapes. We do um, a spare tip pack um, with, with all different shapes on them. I really like this one. This is a little concentric circle one. If we can come into that uh, camera there, lovely. So you can see those. Uh, two circles with a dot in the middle gives us a really nice pattern um, when you start to, to build these up. Okay, so with this one, I'm going straight down, all right? It's not off to the side because it's a brand. And I'm trying to pick up on where I've already done one. Okay, and it's come to the corner of the, um, of the workpiece. Whenever we're working with um, these type of brand um, pyrography pens, we're going to start producing a lot of smoke, okay? Because we're burning this, we're really texturizing it. Um, I've got my little carbon filter here. So this is the air filter, and I fitted um, this little carbon pleat in the front, and it's also got um, a, 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 a charcoal bags in the, in the um, actual filter itself. Um, this is going to draw off a lot of smoke. And for me and the guys in here, we're not going to smoke ourselves out. All right. Hopefully you can still hear me over that. Our pen is nice and hot now, so we, we filled enough time for it to um, do its thing. And I uh, felt it was just blowing things off the back of the uh, table there. So I'm starting this off center. I'm not coming in with a, a full one in the corner. I'm allowing it to kind of sit off the edge of the um, the edge of the board. Okay, get a really nice kind of deep texture in here. And this is really kind of sizzling when I put it on. You can see that smoke going straight into the air filter there um, and keeping us nice and clean. We're not sitting in a workshop full of smoke. And like I said before, I do this at home. And I'll be told off if I fill the house with smoke. So a little filter like this is, is really good. So really, it's as easy as that. I'm putting these in next to each other nice and tight to begin with. And just building up a bit of a pattern. So, a 
let's start to come away from our pattern now. And I'm kind of in my mind thinking about the space that that circle would take up there. And I'm going to come along one and just drop one in there. Again, thinking about that spacing and just bringing one in there. Let's start going a bit more random. If it doesn't quite get it, you know, you can go again. Let's bring one in there. So we've got that nice tight cluster. And then we're going to kind of space them out as we go along. I'm starting to um, fade with my burn there. Um, and that's because I've got a ton of carbon on the tip of this pen. So let's come across to our, um, sorry, no, that is the right one. Um, we've got a load of carbon there. It's gunking up the end. Instead of turning this off and waiting five minutes for it to cool, just using my little brass brush, okay? And you can see the carbon on our um, piece of wood here. Just get rid of that, and we're back in business, all right? We don't want to really turn this off, because you've got a few minutes for it to wait to cool down, and then a few minutes to, for it to heat up again. So I'm just going back over those ones that didn't quite bring the burn out. Um, again, let's just do some kind of hanging off the edge, partial circles. That gives it that kind of random look. If they're all neat in a row, which, you know, if that's your thing, there's no problem with that. I quite like this random spacing. There we go. So we're starting to, to, to build up a little texture. I'm going to turn that off. I'm going to turn off the air filter at the same time. We don't need that one anymore. Um, but you can see how that drew, drew all that smoke out of our way. Um, and know that um, charcoal is really filtering the smoke. So it's taking all the solid material out and taking it out of the air. Um, you know, Always think about, um, you know, when we're burning, obviously no smoke's good for you. Um, always think about ventilation, extraction. Um, you know, we don't want to fill a room with smoke. Okay, so we've got a little texture there, okay. Um, again, makes it nice and tactile. It's something you can feel and kind of uh, play about with. I'm going to go with... Um, a little bit of gilt cream, okay? So this is a uh, Liberon uh, gilt cream. This is really used um, for fixing gold frames and things like that. But it's a lovely little effect it gives. I've got um, some gloves here. Again, whenever you're using these kind of creams, lotions and potions, let's make sure our skin's protected. Um, so at the moment, we've got uh, like a quite a dark black burn okay let's have a close-up of that actually before we um before we put the um stuff on okay so you can see that's giving it a really nice texture and they're quite deep some of these and also uh you can't really see it but on the edge of the the board you can see it start to to creep off of there and when i'm looking at it with my naked eye here i can see all these little lumps and bumps along the edge of the thing, again, really bringing out the texture of the uh, the burn. So, a bit of gold gilt cream. Um, my one's gone a bit dry. Um, they're usually um, a lot softer than this, but it's kind of working in my favor because I'm doing this kind of dry rub, all right? So, just gently starting to color the high points of this. So where we've done our circles, and we've got that kind of um, profile on the, um, 
on the, the nib of the um, solid point one there. Um, where it's shaped, that's burnt into the material. Um, and then where, where we haven't got any material there, it's, it's still on that flat surface. And that allows us to, um, to put things like these dry rubs on onto the top. And again, this is something you can build up. Don't overdo it with the product. Don't put, don't, you know, slap loads on, because what will happen then is it will fill the, the, um, the low spots, and then you don't get that contrast anymore. You still got that texture there, but you don't get that lovely contrast of the gold and black. So I'm just going to do a few more of these. And then we'll start to look at a slightly different technique. Okay, so that's come out quite nice. Fairly pleased with that. And again, oh, got a little splodge of the product there. So I'm just going to try and get that off. Just pick that out. Good. So the old gold finger. Let's go up to our um other camera there thank you jason um and you can see how that gold has kind of picked out the high spots all right um okay um other textures we can use um let's go back to our practice board i'm quite happy with that for a little coaster um you know if you wanted to you could come up from this corner as well and start to, um, to to build that up. I'm going to leave a few of these uh, black so you can see the contrast. You can see where we've been working on it. Um, so, yeah, popping that to one side. Let's bring in our, our kind of practice piece board and have a little play with some other shapes, some other um, kind of styles and, and textures. Um, for this one, I'm going to make a tip up, all right? So... I'm going to go for a kind of um, like a basket weave type um, texture now. So I'm just taking this tip out of the pen. So again, we've got those two little screws. Oops. Nice and gentle. And just whip that one out. All right. Um, I'm going to keep my screwdriver here because I'm going to use that. A um, bit of nichrome wire. This is, what is this one? This is 0.8 of a millimeter. Um, so fairly thick, you know, um, compared to most. Um, 21 SWG, that's a standard wire gauge. This is what I make most of my tips from. All right, it seems to be about the right thickness for, um, for being nice and strong. Um, but also, you know, you can play with it and, and uh, uh, sharpen them, bang it out flat. It's still got that kind of thickness to, to work with. So what I'm doing here, I've got, um, I've got a, a piece of that wire, um, a, a longer than, than usual I would, than I would usually use for a tip, because I'm going to wrap it around the screwdriver. All right, and I'm trying to keep it nice and tight. So wrap it around and one more and what I'm looking for is three little lines okay I'm gonna crimp that in a bit and then just flare out these little bottom ones a pair of uh, jewelers pliers are always really useful these little sprung pliers Okay, so we've got another question there, Colwyn. Yeah, just before you move on, um, we've got one here from Terry. How do you refresh gilt cream? I've never refreshed mine. I'm guessing it's it's spirit based, so I would say a little drop of white spirit or something in there. My one's getting a bit tough, and and uh, I've not been looking after my gilt creams. They've been in my toolbox for a long time. But actually, it's still usable for me for what I do with um, with just kind of almost dry brushing it, if you will, even though I was using my finger. Um, it still works really well. In fact, um, you know, I quite like it a little bit dry because it, it works well for what I'm doing with it. 
but I would say a little drop of um, white spirit in there. It, always read the labels of your um, uh, you know, products. Um, and usually whatever you, um, you know, wash your brushes with, they've usually got some sort of advice on there of how to wash your brushes. Um, that's the sort of stuff that it's, um, you know, suspended in or, or, or made with. Okay, so another question. Just Martin Shepherd's just um, replied to that one saying Terry from Chestnut says white spirit. So it's on oh, the good same man, sort of good man, Terry. Um, got my back. <laughs> got you back. Before before we carry on, and Chris Sullivan's just saying with this with his sensible head on. Um, if that was a coaster, how would you protect the guilt cream? Because um, he certainly want to protect it if that was what he was. That's a good point, actually. Um, for a coaster, so we want something that's going to you know, deal with heat. Um, I would probably use an epoxy or something like that. Um, a varnish is going to white up. Um, you could oil it. You could put an oil on top of that, and that's not going to um, do much. But when the heat starts getting on there, you'll probably find that on the bottom of your mug. Um, so for me, probably something like an epoxy. All right. So, sorry, I was chatting away there. Didn't actually explain what I was doing, did I? So if you have a look at this, I've wrapped a bit of wire around the, um, around the screwdriver, and it's almost like a spring, okay? And I've gone around three times, and what that's going to do, when we start putting heat through this, is give us three little lines. You can buy these tips ready-made. Um, there's all sorts of cool um, pyrography tips out there. These are usually called, uh, they're usually a, a lot more of a coil, um, and they're really tightly pressed together, and they call them feathering tips. So in one swipe, you can do um, a whole bunch of lines. I'm just moving. Whenever you use those solid point ones, just be aware of where they are at all times. Um, you don't want the melting wires. Um, you don't want to stick your elbow on it. So just be careful as to where that is. I'm going to ramp the heat up for this little um, this little section. Um, and we're going to look at a basket, almost a basket weave type pattern. Okay. So I can see the, the nichrome changing kind of color. Um, and let's come to this, the camera up here, Jason. Might be able to see it a little bit clearer. Um, so we're not really seeing the, um, the pattern that this is making. Perhaps if I come up a little bit closer, I'm getting flames coming out now. If I bring it up to the camera and do a little bit closer to the camera. We'll see how that works. So just bear with me a second. So that's the pattern we're creating. Okay, it's like a like a basket weave or or like the kind of mud cloth patterns you get. Really cool stuff. So what I'm doing, where we're running um, uh, horizontal or vertical with that one, we're going opposite for the next section. Okay, so just turning the pen around and going side to side. And whichever one it's sat next to, the next mark goes the other way. Okay, and we're starting to build up a little um, basket weave. Okay, it's not too obvious there, but when we start to apply those creams, um, this is really going to kind of stand out. So let me just build up another one next to it. You can see how quickly this can work. Well, oh, there goes my uh, solid point pen. So this can be quite a quick way of decorating things. This is really just to show you a contrast of what's what. Let's get that tucked in there. And now we are going to look at uh, effects wax. Okay. So I've got, um, this is Liberon again. We've got uh, a black effects wax 
and the liming wax okay so I'm gonna go with the liming wax first and you can see it's got that white lime look to it let's get a fresh glove so I'm not cross-contaminating with gold in the white and white in the gold whilst you're putting your gloves on there Ben I'm just <laughs> gonna ask this question from Vic He's, um, same sort of lines really if you're putting gilt creams onto a turn piece how would you finish that piece so these gilt creams leave a lot of pigment on the um on the surface um they do dry you've got to give them a good drying time all right so allow it to dry um and then i guess you could finish with with whatever you want really once the um you know once it's it's fully dry um, they do recommend that you can buff these. So if you've, you've built it up, um, give it 24 hours and then you can buff it and it will give it like a little shine. Um, again, I wouldn't have this in something that's going to hold your dinner or, you know, anything like that. Um, I would, I would, I've used oils on top of them. I'm not sure that's the correct thing to do, um, but it, it seems to take and it didn't pick up the pigment or anything like that. Um, but yeah, uh, gilt creams, um, I guess you'd just finish on top of them as you would finish, you know, finish any of your stuff with, with oils and waxes and things like that. Um, just be careful not to overwork them too much. So if you are putting a, a liquid on top of it, um, put it on there and almost, you want to take it almost straight back off. Um, don't allow it to kind of, um, reactivate all that pigment and, because that's when it starts getting messy and starts spreading it around. So um, any finish you're putting on, put it on, get it back off if it's a liquid. All right. Okay. Um, so we've got our little um, basket weave here. Um, I'm just going to get a, some of this liming wax. This is nice and soft. Okay. Um, and what I'm going to try and do is push this down into, the, um, into those marks we've made. So this time I'm loading it up quite a lot. I've got quite a lot of that product on my finger there. And I'm loading it right down into there. And I'm kind of pushing it or squishing it in. Again, these creams and stuff can get a little bit messy. So just careful as you go. All right. Just going to grab um, a little bit of blue roll. Excuse me, just a moment. So let's get that nicely in there. Uh, lovely, thank you guys. Um, so let's just wipe the excess back off. And I'm turning the cloth each time obviously if this is your um you know around your work piece um don't smear it everywhere like i did keep to your texture all right don't put it all around um because this can be a difficult thing to get off um and because it's a wax we don't really want to sand this off um because then you're going to get that wood dust kind of mix in with it and it'll dull back you want that nice vibrant white so let's get rid of the excess. Okay. Now I'm going to go with a bit of the um, special effects black. Um, again, Libron product. I get told off for using my screwdriver to open you know, tins here, but that's what's at hand. And this is the black. Um, and what we're trying to show you here. Again, this is going to go on the surface, so I'm not loading it too much. This is um, almost dry wiping it on. So we're coming across the surface there, and we're being careful not to push it down into that white. We're just trying to pick up on those high spots. Okay, so what we've got now is almost the negative 
of what was there on the burn. Okay, just have a little little quick tidy up. Um, so let's show you that one. Okay, so we've got the white down in the um, the low spots and the black up on the high spots. Okay, so what we've done by using those paste and wax is um, we've colored the pyrography. It's not, um, you know, you're not just stuck to the browns and blacks of, of pyro with a little bit of creativity and some, um, and some different products. Um, you can really bring these things to life. Um, I use um, the verdigris one really works well um, on that pattern. So it's like a, like a oxygen, uh, oxidized copper. Um, and you get that lovely kind of green color. Um, and then if you put like a copper, because they also do copper gilt creams, um, a copper uh, gilt on top of that, um, you get that lovely um, look as though you do with old antiques. So quite naturally, where the green is in the low spots, um, it's, it stays down in there. And um, where things are being handled, so it's an old antique that's perhaps been polished um, you know, once a day for uh, however many years. Um, the high spots have that lovely copper, um, that lovely fresh metal, and the low spots have that green. So you can get some really nice effects by, by putting um, creams and waxes and things on top of your pyrography or into your pyrography. Okay, so another question here. Before you've done that, would it be best to, before you put the wax on, would it be best to brush or sand the surface? Of your, um, of your pyro pyrography um, markings. Yeah, you could do. Um, if I was, um, I don't like the the dust that you'd get in there um, through sanding. Um, again, you could brush that out. Um, but what, just sanding sanding the surface? And I'm guessing to take out any loose fibers and stuff. Oh, okay. Yeah, you could you could do that. Um, we have started off on a on a um, a fairly well prepared piece of timber. This hasn't been sanded or anything. It's it's slightly rough around the edges, um, but because we've got that good surface, um, the um, pyro is below the surface, and actually, I'm um, I'm filling that with cream, um, so it's not um, the the kind of uh, material in there is all nice and burnt and and um, and sitting down nicely. Um, so it's not going to be much kind of um, flaring or um, loose uh, open pores in there. Um, so it should just take the cream on uh, quite naturally and easily. Okay, so another one. Okay, one more. Just related back to the garden sign project that Chris mm -hmm. was talking about earlier. He's just asking uh, what would be the best timber to show the pyro effect but also be durable for the outside. Okay, so, um, you know, I use a lot of oak. Um, oak can be quite dark, um, especially like the brown oaks and stuff, the really pretty um, burrs and all that sort of stuff. That's ten what I tend to go for. Um, and I tend to go quite heavy with the burning so it, um, so it really sticks out and introduce these textures to it. So um, you can use stippling and things like that. They're going to really um, make it a lot more bold. Um, so if you're if you haven't got a piece of timber that contrasts uh, with the burn, um, I tend to use these textures and things to, to really kind of make it stand out a little bit more. Um, uh, what timbers do we use outside? Um, it, mostly oak for my signs, if I'm honest. Um, you know, things like your sycamores um, and uh, lime and stuff like that are really good for your indoor burning, so your illustrative stuff. Um, but they're not going to stand up to the weather outside. Um, a good finish on top of something, um, so a good varnish um, will, will kind of weatherproof it. Um, but there's loads of loads of lovely timbers out there. Um, I don't know, guys, have you got any ideas? What, what about like holly or something like that? Would that work well? I chestnut? Would, I would go, yeah, chestnut. Um, Oroco. Oroco. That's good one. That's the ones available in this country anyway. Lovely. Yeah. So then the problem will be your softwoods if you go with those. Yeah. They don't burn well for what you're doing. So larch, 
Western Road Cedar aren't going to burn nicely for this and they won't hold the, the detail. So some uh, top information there, guys. Um, you know, the... Um, <sighs> The properties that we're looking for, for timbers that's going to go outside, so that high kind of resin content, um, they tend to work best outside. Um, they don't rot as quickly because of that resin content. But that's going to give us problems with our pyrography. Again, for the same reason, because of the resin. Um, it, it tends to gum up on the, on, the, um, on the burning as soon as we introduce heat to it it kind of pulls the resin from the timber and it will stick to those like nobody's business. So have your little brass brush uh, at the ready. Um, and also they, they tend to be quite fast growing those types of timbers. Um, so you get that big spacing between the grain, you get that slow winter growth, um, which can end up quite hard. Um, and then the, um, the, the summer growth is really fast and you get that open grain texture, a bit like what we, we saw on the, um, on the chestnut earlier, okay? So you're kind of fighting on two different fronts there. It's the best, you know, making the best of, of what you got. Um, the, if it was me, I would just stick with oak and just be, um, and, and, and really kind of texture the, the lettering um, to give you that contrast. And perhaps introduce some of these colors and things like that if you wanted to, um, you know, you don't always have to color what you've textured. You could put a little highlight around the edge of, of what you've done. And that, again, is going to lift it off of the board or lift it off of the, your, your uh, selected piece of timber. Okay. Um, so I think that's about it for today. Thank you very much for joining us. Um, if you've got any questions, um, you know, you can drop them to our Woodworking Wisdom at Axminster Tools. Um, any questions, any requests, um, you know, please send them through to the to that email. Um, tomorrow, Jason is going to be going through the um, the rider sharpening station. Um, so, you know, tune in for that one. Um, again, we're showing you the very basics, the the principles, sharp tools. Everyone needs to sharp tools if you're if you're into woodwork. Um, and Jason's given us some really good quality um, examples of how we can sharpen, you know, on whatever kind of setup you've got at home. OK, um, so we'll see you again tomorrow. Thank you very much. And uh, yeah, see you soon.